Should you still buy iPhone 8? Well, I've had the iPhone 8 for about nine months now, and I want to share with you the experience I've had with this device and if it's still worth it. Now, the iPhone 8 is definitely the least popular iPhone that's probably out there in terms of all of them. I mean, I looked it up and I seen that it's actually number 10 on that list. So I'll, I'll show you, I'll leave a link down below where I seen that list, but at the same time, you know, the iPhone 8 is also cheaper than an iPhone 10, gives you most of the same specifications, but the iPhone 10 easily overshadowed this phone because of its OLED screen, its newer design, it's the future of the iPhone. And when we talk about should you still buy it, think about the forward thinking perspective as in a few months down the line, because we're only three months away from an LCD iPhone that's going to replace the iPhone 8. So Apple also introduced the iOS 12 just about a month ago, and that's going to improve the speed of older iPhones. So that makes this even a harder sell in the iPhone 8. So this is going to be one of those iPhones that I think that is quickly forgotten in just a couple years. Unfortunately, this is not going to be your most popular device. As a matter of fact, I read all the comments and I don't have that many comments at all talking about this particular device. And that, that should tell you something because we do have quite a bit of Apple users on this channel. So iPhone 8, not the most popular, but with that being said, let's talk about the key specifications and uh, what they've been like. Now, I don't want to go too long because key specifications can be boring, but the A11 CPU inside this phone has been keeping it running very fast and efficient. That's what we expect. But the most thing I noticed about coming from like an iPhone 7 to an iPhone 8 with the A11 has been the battery life. The battery life has been significantly better in my experience on an iPhone 8 than an iPhone 7. I'm talking like an hour longer on the charge, and I think that's mostly due to that A11 CPU. Kicking around to the back, the camera has also been a nice improvement over, if you came from like a 6S, definitely a nice improvement here in the camera, specifically in low light and uh, video, really good video on this device as well if you're gonna be doing 4K 60. So that's a couple of the key specs I really liked is that the camera has gotten much better and so has the processor in this device. Two gigabytes of RAM has been enough for this device. I don't find myself ever needing more than that on iOS. You know, I don't even notice a difference between this and a three gig of RAM iOS phone. I mean, there's, there's really a no noticeable difference, even though this has two gigs of RAM. So that spec doesn't really matter too much. I want to talk a little bit about the build quality. Now, this phone has been dropped a couple of times. So I do have some nicks here along the edge, as you can see on camera right here. So right there, Nick, and then a Nick down here, Nick over here, and a little crack over here on the glass by the camera. No biggie. It's really small. You can cover it up with a case, but there's a little crack right there in the glass. So this was a pretty decent drop, not a very heavy drop, like not a very high drop, but still. So the glass, you know, keep this thing in a case because I got lucky with this one. If, if this drops again, this thing might just crack all the way down the back. So not really feeling these glass feels of 2018 when it comes to their fragility, but I do like the fact that it feels a little more premium. A little bit more on that display. The display definitely gets bright enough. LCD is one of the easier displays I found to see outdoors. OLED, some of the new ones on the Samsung phones have been pushing up the brightness, so those are pretty easy as well. But this wasn't too bad to see outdoors, and the display has good viewing angles. It kind of looks like a MacBook Retina display on the iPhone you know, 8, like the older MacBook Retina display like from 2015. Looks very similar to that display, but the cal color calibration with True Tone, just a little more yellower. Other than that, like I say, the display a little bit disappointing just because there's so much competition on the market that offers up a better, more saturated you know, display for the iPhone 8. So we don't even have to talk about should you buy it when it comes to software. If you're watching this video, you're likely an iOS user, so iOS 12 is going to make this phone even better, even faster, and 11.4 has been running pretty slick on the iPhone 8, no issue. So I haven't been having much bugs as I had when this phone first came out. So the iPhone 8 definitely crashed a few times when it first came out, but it's really slick and smooth on 11.4, and it's only going to get better with 12 and some new features. So of course, the software front always a win on this iPhone series. So yeah, software is still good, no problem. We don't need to discuss that too much further. Now, when it comes to the battery life for the iPhone 8, if you're thinking about buying one of these in terms of battery, here's another area that it's kind of funny because 
you know, this phone, while it doesn't prove on the iPhone 7, I'm pretty sure that Apple's newer, larger iPhone LCD is going to get a larger battery. I mean, you're not going to make a 6.1 inch phone with a less efficient battery. So this again, when they upgrade to the new LCD iPhone, this is going to be improved as well. And I think we're going to do away with, you know, having two LCD phones. There's just going to be one this year that should replace the Plus series and this series. So while battery life on this can easily get you through a day, if you're a heavy user, you might want to stick it out and just wait for the LCD iPhone coming later this year. But battery life overall, I'm getting a solid five hours screen time and usage definitely most of the day. But this one doesn't quite last as long as the iPhone 10 or the iPhone 8 Plus. Those go just a little bit more than this phone. I'm going to say maybe 30 to 45 minutes longer in my use experience over the iPhone 8. But definitely pretty good for a smaller device for sure. What about the audio quality for the iPhone 8? Well, having no headphone jack is kind of a bummer still. But you know what? We've come to accept that as Apple users, that is gone and probably not coming back to any of these iPhones going forward, but the actual speakers on the phone are pretty loud, as you can hear right there with that T-Mobile ad. So what does four years do to a flagship smartphone? Today we revisit the Samsung. Haven't had an issue, and it's actually quite nice to have really loud speakers on a smaller device. You typically get louder speakers on a bigger device because they got more room for components, but on a smaller device, you know, it's really nice to have this because if you take a look at like a smaller uh, iPhone from years ago, like the iPhone 6, the speakers are just night and day better on the iPhone 8. So the audio quality on the external anyway, cover that up and you can still hear it. Covering that up is about how an iPhone 6 sounds. So yeah, pretty good audio. I've been very pleased with that. And Bluetooth 5.0 on here has made Bluetooth connections just so much fun because they're so fast. So what that means is that before when you'd be waiting for your Bluetooth headset to connect, sometimes you know you would just be waiting a little while. But here on the iPhone 8, I found it to connect super fast. So Bluetooth is very fast on the iPhone 8. That's something a lot of people don't mention. But just connecting your devices through this is very fast just due to the 5.0. That goes for all the newer iPhones, but I really enjoyed that. Okay, so talking about the camera on the iPhone 8. Now the camera, I'm not going to go on too much about this. I've done some comparisons with other phones on the iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone 10. You could check those videos out. They're the same camera as this one. This camera is stellar on the iPhone 8 and you're not going to have any issues for a few years going forward with this device and you get you know you get that video that goes in the 4k 60 so in terms of camera quality no issues for the iPhone 8 it is phenomenal and I definitely can replace most point and shoots so this is a really strong performer when it comes to the camera department very natural colors very detailed photos as you can see right there I mean it's just incredible what this camera can do so when it comes to that department you still get the same you know iphone software as it's always been pano square video slow-mo time lapse and the uh, selfie quality is also much improved over some older iphones you get your filters right here i still wish they would put you know those video settings right in the camera all the settings as a matter of fact right in the camera but overall cameras are stellar on the iphone 8 and i haven't had no issues in that regard one area where the iphone 8 has actually been very good is the call quality not many dropped calls and pretty good speaker performance and earpiece performance so if you're looking for a phone for good call quality apple has really fixed this up over the years you know they had the the problems with some of the older iphones in the call quality department but the iphone 8 very strong here in this regard so coming in on my closing statements for the iphone 8 should you still buy this phone well i don't think a lot of people bought Bought this phone in the first place but in the second place I mean yes of course they sold millions but I'm saying the majority of people are still probably using iPhone 7 or iPhone 7 plus even iPhone 10 over this device because when you walk into an Apple store and you're gonna buy a 700 800 dollar phone and then you see this one why would you buy this one over this one now that that's quite of a tricky proposition but at the same time we have to think about the forward or the future of apple in just a few months we're going to have an lcd iphone that is going to replace this and the iphone 8 plus and then you're quickly going to feel like you're using a dated 
phone. So that's my main, you know, gripe with the iPhone 8 is that even though it has the internal guts of all the newer devices of 2017, it still feels trapped in an old era of design like the iPhone 6. You can't tell them apart really except for the back of them and then you get a case on you really can't tell them apart. But if you're looking for a phone that just gets the job done and does it well and doesn't really stand out or is not that flashy, then the iPhone 8 probably is still a good pick for you. So would you still buy an iPhone 8? Comment that down below. Did you buy one? Share your experience with the community in the comments section. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing for more videos like this. <laughs>